Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. As Christians, we are in the midst of the octave of Easter, the first week of the Easter season, which lasts 50 days and brings us to the celebration of Pentecost. Today in this common prayer, we take time to sing, pray, listen to God's voice within, and reflect on the resurrection of Jesus and the implications of the resurrection for us personally and communally. As we enter into the prayer of Tizay today, you're invited to offer your personal intentions in the action of lighting candles in the center of the church as we continue to sing. So that all who wish to participate may have the opportunity, we ask that you light only one candle, and we hope that there are enough. Let's take a moment in silence before we begin our prayer. God, our Father, on this solemn feast, you give us the joy of recalling the rising of Christ to new life. As the disciples on the road to Emmaus came to recognize you in the breaking of the bread, help us to be attentive to the signs and wonders of your resurrection present in our daily lives. May the joy of our annual celebration Bring us to the joy of eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Now that very day, two of them were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, with their eye, but with their eyes they were preventing, prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Messiah should, should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
We worship you, Jesus, our Savior. You conquered death by your cross. Therefore, we offer the following prayers. You are the stone rejected by the builders. You have become the cornerstone. Make all of us living stones in your church. We pray. We pray to you for Christians. May they live in the joy of the resurrection, and may they be a visible sign of your presence by their mutual love. We pray. We pray to you for the leaders of your church. As they celebrate your resurrection with all your servants, may they be strengthened for your service. We pray. We pray to you for all teachers who devote themselves to helping us grow as Christian men and women through the inspiring life of St. John the Baptist de La Salle. May we follow his examples of service to the poor. We pray. We pray to you for the leaders of the nations. May they exercise their office as servants of justice and peace. We pray. We pray to you for all who are suffering from illness, grief, old age, and exile. May your resurrection be a source of comfort and aid for them. We pray. We pray to you for all people and situations represented by the lit candles. May we continue to confidently pray for those who cry out to you and trust that you hear and answer. We pray. It is with confidence that we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Eternal Father, you gave us the Easter mystery as our covenant of reconciliation. May the new birth we celebrate show its effects in the way we live. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. May we go in the peace of Christ. God.